Hey guys, it's Drek, and this is four 12 inch PTG barrels, and I intend to be using those on this. I was going through my basement, and I found my old Supermax 15,000. It's in great condition still, and this was my personal one when I was a kid. It still has an excellent tank that doesn't leak, and the pump works, so I've decided that I'm finally going to overhaul it. And I'm going to start breaking it down and show you what I'm left with. Alright, now I've started breaking down the Supermax 1500, and I need to remove these stickers before I paint it, but I'm not going to sand off the Laramie logo on the other side because I like it. Once you remove all of the screws, which are almost all the same size, there's one smaller one up at the top, you can take it apart and it breaks into two halves, but in order to do that, there is a back orange cap that goes on here and a front orange cap right here. And to get both of those off, I had to dip it in boiling water, break up that glue, and then I just popped them off. Once you do that, the shell comes apart. You can see that these green segments on the handle have one screw that holds them in, so my paint job will be nicer for that. And the green things that are up at the top that look like, I have no idea, conduits, they slide out so I can paint those separately too and this one just lifts right out. It's got a pump, it's got a trigger spring. I'm hoping that I can figure out how to get this tank into two halves. But if I can't, there we go, it just pops off. That comes off so you can see that the piping held up remarkably well for sitting in my garage for however many years. And I'm going to do exactly like FA24 does. I'm gonna glue over this trigger pull spring I'm going to take apart the turret and try and get a better turret seal, and I'm going to add in those barrels. I'll probably, I haven't decided yet, plug this pump just so I can get better performance, and I'm going to clean it up too and re-grease it just because it is not enjoyed being in my basement. So I'm going to start doing those things, and I'll film segments as necessary. All right, guys, so to open up this turret assembly, there are two holes here that you have to line up. There's only two different positions because it's at a 180 degree line in between it. So once you line it up, you come in with a Phillips head screwdriver and remove both those screws. Once you've done that, you can come in and remove this black sheath. Save this piece because it helps to guide the barrels later on. Now, you can remove each one of these pseudo orange barrels and their air restrictor system just by popping them out. You don't even have to worry about breaking them because they're garbage. But there's the barrel, there's the air restrictor, and there's the spring. These old air restrictor springs are a lot tougher than the ones that are in the blasters nowadays. But I'm removing all of these so that I can rebarrel it with my PTG, which I'll be seating down in here, coating with E-tape and gooping inside. And then I'm going to sand these down so that I can sheath the PTG with this conduit piping PVC, which I will slide over, and it's got a very nice fit, as you can see there, so it won't take a lot of adhesive or E-tape wrap to get it to fit. I'm looking for 9-inch barrels, but if it goes one way or the other and I just sand them down to an even height at the top, I don't really care because it's an air blaster, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'm going to start shaving down the turret, prepping all of these pieces for painting, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm further along. Hey guys, so I'm painting all the pieces for the Super Fang. I've been doing it at night lately because it's a whole lot easier, and I don't bother anybody, and the university doesn't really care. But I've painted these pieces red with my Fanger Red, which is just Krylon Fusion Satin Burgundy color. And then over here with the same Krylon for plastics but in black, I've done all the accessory pieces. And they've each got a few coats of paint on them, but they should be ready to go as soon as they dry. I'll bring them in and start reassembling things. The next segment should be a showcasing of the turret. As you'll notice, it's not out here because I haven't painted it because the epoxy is still curing. I'll show you that in a second. Alright, so you can see here how I've assembled the turret. I've gooped the barrels in to stubs of orange that I left on the turret and then the PETG is of course nested inside each one of these barrels. I've put craft foam, not a rubber washer, 
in the back here to create a much better turret seal since it's an automatically, not automatically, since it's a manually rotated turret, I don't think it'll matter how much friction there is, I just want a good turret seal. So I'm going to start painting this top part and then I'll hammer them back together and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. You can see here for the Supermax 1500 or the Super Fang that I have already grouped this back into this to create a flawless turret to air chamber seal. And now I'm going to do something that FA24 does in all of his Supermaxes. And I really like because I believe it gives you a stronger trigger pull and a much faster release on this valve. And he hot glues over the triggered spring here that goes between the tank's release and the trigger pull. So I'm going to do that now, show you one last take of the internals and put it back together. Alright, so you can see here that these are the completed internals of my Supermax. I've laid back in the cord. Before I put the plunger together, I've got this slipped onto it so I can slide it back on. I've hot glued over the entirety of the trigger draw and even put a small bead down there so that the spring for the trigger return isn't going anywhere. Everything is looking good and functioning reasonably well, so I'm ready to start screwing the main body back together. My turret fit in really nicely. The halves of the shell got put back together reasonably well, and I've laid back in this black cosmetic piece. So I'm going to screw it back together now and show you the final segment. As you guys can see, I have finished the Nerf Supermax mod, and this thing just turned out phenomenal. It hits 100 feet flat with a variety of Steffens. Here I've got um, some Steffens that I've gathered over the course of a few Nerf Wars recently. This is probably the best one, followed by these Nerf Omania slugs, and then this is from one of those Riverside kids. It's not a great Steffen, but it'll work. I'm using my Dremel bit as a ramrod. As you guys know, the Supermax fires from the bottom barrel. Most of these Steffens have air gun fit. In fact, all of them seem to, so I don't really need the ramrod them, but I'm going to make sure they go all the way down in there. The barrels are all a reasonably similar length. I've detailed it on the back here with Super Fang 1500, because that's my thing. And then I've got Drac the Nerf Vampire on the other side. This is a good backup primary, because it hits really nice ranges. It'll take about six pumps before you hear that squeaky noise because I plugged the pump. You've got to manually rotate the thing and when I fire my ranges are just incredible. I absolutely love this blaster. I'm getting phenomenal shots out of this and it looks cool too. And it's hard to beat these vintage blasters in terms of kinda how they look neat and performance. I know I could have done a rear loading hole up at the top and loaded the turret as I went along, but I really like the look of it without that, and I feel like the paint job was much cleaner because of it. But that is my Supermax 1500. It turned out really nice. I'm really pleased with it. I have one more Supermax 1500, so if anybody wants me to make one of these for a commission, I can provide that once, but... I'm pleased with how this turned out. As always, thanks for watching.